I just yes. like how we went from like gas station cupcake to Bible. Yep. <laughs> that, that, that's how my brain works. Yeah. Place. <laughs> Good, I like it. My skull's just like <laughs> it's just a cage full of Jack Russell Terriers and ferrets. What about this? Hey, what about this? <laughs> Real it. Yep. That's how. That's how it is. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we can tell you're not playing yet because that wasn't Pokemon analogy for the inside of your brain. It's like, no. oh, it's just full of Pidgeys and Rattatats. Like it's, yep. can't can't possibly contain it. No, no I, I still call them Punchy Rocks. You know, there's a was it a Geode <laughs> one? I don't know. Yeah, oh, rats. <laughs> oh. I, I still so. think it's just dog fighting. <laughs> I mean, it is, but when you say it like that, you don't have to say it. <laughs> it's Horrible. cute. Oh, I it's love cute. It like that. <laughs> Jigglypuff. I guess yep. Jigglypuff. Technically, yeah. dog fighting. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yep. Shall we begin? Sure. <laughs> The adult beverages are poured, the kids are asleep. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhood, gaming, and new fathers figuring out their gaming lives. My name is Trevor, and I have a one month... Hold on. Uh-oh. Oh, I struggled because I was like... Happened. I've had to say his name... I've had to say it a bunch of times now, and I keep going one year in a bit, or one, or trying... I've done 14 months a few times and not liked it. So... Just he, he hasn't moved out yet. <laughs> I still have a kid. I'll cover you for a while. Yeah, he is one one year and two months. I thought you were just gonna go with the one year for like a year. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah even the two months thing is just like it's frustrating. I got a one year old. What's it to you? <laughs> exactly. Uh, my name's Gavin. I have an eleven month old. And I'm Jeff. I got a six year old and a three year old. Yeah, and no, I pulled that like. I, I tripped over that like three or four times meeting new people. Like, how old is he? And it's like, because 14 months, like it's almost like I'm doing a year and four months, which that's not 14 years. And I'm just, no, nope. I'm, I'm choking all over it because it's like. <laughs> it's like when somebody asks you what time it is and you want to be cool and give them military time, but then you mess it up. <laughs> it's like, oh, 3,200. And they're like, well, no, that's not how it works. Or you relate it to your wife. You're like, oh, yeah, she's on mat leave or she's been off of mat leave for like two months. So, yeah. she's back to work. <laughs> uh, so, gentlemen, how was your week in fatherhood and gaming? Um, uh, mine was pretty good. Uh, fatherhood okay, wise, Jeff? No, I'm yeah. no honestly, <laughs> you can't you can pass to Jeff. I haven't. That it was pretty. Just you know, good week. Well, you can give us week. a. You can give us an update on the sleep training. How that's going? Ah, uh, good. Good. She's taken to it. The only um, one little hurdle that we did hit was uh, her milk tolerance at night. Like as far as like how much bottle she can take, it used to be a lot higher. But for some reason now, she, if we overfeed her bottle, she just pops, and uh, we got to clean that up. Um, but uh, but knock on wood, tonight's been good. And it's only that one. It's only the nighttime bottle. It wasn't like the mid day ones or anything like that. It was just a nighttime one, and it's not like that one was much bigger than the other ones, but uh, we knocked the volume down a little bit tonight and uh, also made sure she took breaks so that way she just didn't slam the whole thing back and then lose it. And uh, yeah, that seemed to go over a little bit better. So, But we did some research too, and it seems like it's kind of a common thing sometimes. Like Babies just have a little bit of a bedtime barfy phase. And uh, so yeah, we've been kind of contending with that and uh, um yeah, it uh it's you know, you clean it up, you move on. That might, that might just be a nicety longer. that uh might just be a nicety that us parents like say to each other. It's like, yeah, I don't know, my kid's like leg keeps falling off and he attaches it. Oh, it's it's a phase. Every kid okay. has a leg fall off he phase. Don't worry don't worry about it. They'll walk it off. Well uh, not yeah. Yeah. Uh Jeff yourself? Uh my week was full of poop. Ooh. Cool. Like. Trevor? <laughs> Yeah, in the direct contest, uh, contrast to Gavin's week, um, my three-year-old decided, hey, I don't want to be potty trained anymore, and uh, oh, no. decided to uh, poop his pants on uh, multiple occasions. So that wasn't fun, and that's way not just, worse. 
Not even just the once, like it was... No, it was multiple times, like over the span of a week. These are like defiant poops? Like a defiant... I'm pretty sure like an angry defiant poop. (laughs) Angry angry poop, which is so much worse. (laughs) They probably just conjure up everything and just get it all out. It's it's bad. It stinks. So, yeah, those were not fun. uh, Nature's laxative. (laughs) Um... And to go along with that, my six-year-old um, hasn't experienced um, he hasn't experienced a plug toilet before. Oh, so he goes to the bathroom by himself, and then I find out later, hey, the toilet was plugged, and he continually tried to flush it. Hmm. So there was water all in my basement that you I had, had to clean up. All the poop. Yeah. So it, that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so I'm kind of I, I needed a break, and at the end of the week, I decided to go to beer fest. There so, you go. Okay. for a second, I felt like this was going to be your break, and I'm like, poor, no. ch- <laughs> poor choice, <No. laughs> poor choice, sir. There's get out there, go. Yeah. Well, I it's one of those beer fests that like nobody can be like, do you really need to be going? And it's like no. you just explained your week, and it's like nobody yeah. would deny you that. I have two kids. Just let me get in. <laughs> Just give me this. So, no, that was really great. It was hot, though. It was, again, another scorcher, like 41 degrees on Friday? Celsius. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Friday was nuts. So, but we survived, barely. Um, and then today I'm just drinking more poop. Oh. Sick Brutal. Burn. This wheat side launch is horrible. The tip of that hat to the segue. <laughs> Come on, Bad. man! It's one of my favorite beers. What is this? I don't like it. Well, what what does it taste like? Are you saying it tastes like raspberries, like last time? It has something in it. I don't know. You say it's <laughs> banana. I don't think. I don't know what it is. It's not beer, though. It's not. I don't know. Oh, uh, you guys are. That's terrible. All right. No. Like very peculiar, though, is that this beer that, like, according to Jeff, and I'm I'm gonna get a hold of one and try it. I didn't go hunting for one, because I'm like, I, if I walk by it and it's there, I'll get it. Yeah. But I'm not gonna make a special trick. But it just seems to be very popular. Like, it's it's sold out of a lot of beer stores, and it's like, it's like, do people really like it, or is it just like everybody it's, wants to be seen with the can? It's the Pokemon Go of beers right now. Yeah, so it's like an old gas station cupcake. I could just imagine eventually somebody looking back into old podcasts just trying to find like, some time that I ever, you know, talk smack about another game and they're like, there was at one time Gavin called Pokemon Go gas station cupcake. Yeah, oh, great. That's gonna be some mudslinger is gonna Man. dig this up. Well, it's, not okay. just the, it's not even just the it's not even just the it's fine if you don't like it. But it was just like the man. That's such a diverse set of opinions on it because because I love it. Yeah. And like and it's fine. It, it's not you came on and said it's not for me. I don't like how this thing. It's like you call it poop water. <laughs> like it's like, uh, yeah. So it's like you're dying of like uh, well yeah. dying of thirst isn't a good example, but uh, I would it's not hot, drink this. Actually. It's a it's a hot Friday after a week long of poop fest and. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're offered, and you reject it. Oh, I, that would be the like the straw that broke the camel's back. I'd be like, that's it. I can't even get a good beer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, like if but, Jeff was offered like Mountain Dew or crab juice. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. Would be that's an old reference, eh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. You'll have to be the tiebreaker, <laughs> Gavin. I don't know. I don't know yeah, about this. Will, uh, if, if Gavin, I'm hoping, man, you're at least in the mid range of like, it's fine. Because <laughs> if you come on too saying it, I hate it, then we have problems. It's just going to shatter poor Trevor's reality. <laughs> <laughs> What's real anymore? I just... Go to the doctor. You're like, I think there's something wrong with my tongue. <laughs> apparently. Yeah, I think it's more my. You know, I think it's more my credibility because, like, next time I read. Everyone's gonna be writing things down and saying anytime Trevor recommends it, like, ooh, cross <laughs> that's on the no fly list. No thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, but now I think it's delicious. I'm gonna say it's horrible just to mess with you. Uh, oh, there you go. No, I'm done. gonna be biased now. No, no, I'll, I'll I'll try it out. Um I know that Trevor's banking on meh um as far as my review goes. Man up. Man up. Anything north of meh. 
is uh is a victory. But of course a Gavin meh is like a you know That's pretty it's serious, pretty, right? It's pretty, it's pretty yeah. yeah, I don't I don't just I don't just give out meh. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, are you high connoisseurs of taste? <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally drinking something with orange juice in it. So I wouldn't put me that well, high up. Um, yeah. Like a screwdriver? <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, Amsterdam Brewery, uh, they call it the Sweetwater Squeeze Rattler Blood Orange. Okay. Well, I guess we're doing our beer picks now, by the way. <laughs> so, well, like, hey, so what we're, do you, what, we're already there. What, what, what did you go for it? I left Flavor no. Country. Um, yeah. It's good. It's tasty. So, so we're going to put Jeff, hold on. We'll just put down, so Jeff, side launch, Loved maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe to save his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, Gavin, so what are you drinking then? So, a Rattler from Amsterdam, I believe? Yeah, um, and it's nice. It's a little bit more on the orange juice side than the beer side than I like. Um, Lowenbrow did one with the uh, lemon that was, I found, a little bit more refreshing and tart. Like, this one's not bad, but a little sweet for, like, my personal taste. But, um, you know, over ice, like, it's, it's refreshing, but, like, if I was to sit down to it and nobody told me it was a Rattler, I thought it was be like some sort of a cooler spritzer kind of thing um so it's it's good i think it's just sort of a little bit further away from the beer family than i prefer as far as if i'm sitting down to something like that but as far as a grown-up beverage and something cold and sweet and a little tart on a on a warm day it's still enjoyable like it's um you know it's no side launch um <laughs> I'm just um, joking. Uh, for the uh, for, for, <laughs> so I think one of the more popular Rattlers is the grapefruit one. Um, yeah, not, there's a lot of grapefruit ones, but um, the, there's one like fame. I don't want to call it famous, but like the can is like orange and white, like almost a little bit old school looking. Mm-hmm. I think I think if anyone's or, or at least I think grapefruit grapefruit Rattler would be a good baseline. Do you like that? You I'm like gonna, that one? I'm gonna have to actually try the grapefruit one because uh, I originally got the blood orange one because I was gonna be splitting it with my wife. And I know she's not a big fan of grapefruit, so I went with something that I knew was a flavor that she enjoyed, and we both liked it. But we both also agreed that the um, that the Lowenbrow one that we had was a, a little bit nicer. Like we liked it a little bit more. But actually, the other night we, um, oh oh oh, the the cider that you can get at the wine rack, um, the sec- babes, what's the name of that cider? Outside opinion. <laughs> Growers, yeah, uh, Growers uh, brand um, cider. They do a pear cider. Hmm. We had it the other night, and it was really nice. It was clean, refreshing, uh, really crisp. It was good, really, really good. Nice over ice. And, yeah, you can get it at the wine rack, which is convenient, too, because they're usually open late. And I was there anyways to get some uh, sparkling wine for a friend. And I was like, I'll grab a cold can of that. Why not? And it was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so did my wife. It was a nice one for us to split. Um, yeah, um, the uh, a, a pro tip for couples, if you're splitting like a cider or a Rattler or something that's nice over ice and it comes in a tall can, if you get two Pilsner glasses, it fills up really well. Hmm. And it's a good way to sort of just, if you just want to share something, because that's the thing too with these sweeter sort of Rattlers is I find it's like to sit to a whole pint of it can be a little bit much, um, but to have half a pint of it is, is over some ice is, is quite nice treats it more like a cocktail than a actual pint of beer nice yeah. good pick i like it the so for myself i've actually gone off uh off beer again the <laughs> I like the, it, it was one of the more interesting things that i'd seen in there and it um we had an opportunity to tra- travel to australia at some point one thing that was big down there was something called ginger beer Hmm. So alcoholic ginger beer. So it's like a very so this one in particular is Krabby's. Now it's a so oh, it's not I've it's, that. yeah yeah, yeah it's a beer fest too. It's nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's a tasty one. So it's not like it's it's not it's definitely not a Ryan ginger, and it's definitely not so and much more milder from a ginger ale type point of view. Like call it, it's definitely mild on the ginger taste to it, but it's. I don't want to. I don't know if malt is really the right way to describe it, but it's definitely like a mild type of uh, ginger taste to it. Um, it's got a decent. It's not. It's not hugely alcoholic. I think it's only four percent, but ends up being a bit on that uh, sweeter, milder side. And if you've not quite like beer, if you almost like beer, like it, it's just not quite your thing. Like this definitely ends up being kind of a nice 
offshoot that you can kind of get into. So yeah, it's flavorful, refreshing. Like, and it's always a great time to have. Always a great time to have. <laughs> it's flavorful, refreshing. It's always a nice alternative or something to kind of switch it up. And again, for as as with most of our picks, it seems this, these weeks going goes well on a hot summer day. So. <laughs> You know what was extreme? Like that lineup, they were at Beer Fest, right? Krabby's, they were there. Oh, nice. And um, so they were pretty popular. What was extremely popular was um, Twisted Tea. Mm. Twisted and I was Tea. Getting a Ralph. I was, like, <laughs> at it, I was like, this is not my cup of tea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like tea, but I, and I, I really like iced tea, but I'm not sure about like a. Yeah, I don't know if those. Well, like flavors mix for me. Long Island iced tea, but I don't, is there even? I don't even think there's tea in a Long Island iced tea. Is there no, any? I don't think there is. No, it's just a mix of things that taste like tea. Now, did you have one, or were you just not? You didn't. You weren't in the mood for a bad I, drink experience. No, no, I didn't want to, um, like, toy with uh, my stomach at that point. So uh, that lure didn't work for you. No, no, it didn't. So I. Uh, you know what the challenge is now next week. Hard tea oh, for everybody. Why did I do this again? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, we, won't, we won't go down there. We've we've had our fun. Now it's time to get some good beers out there. <laughs> As he holds up the side launch can. It's growing on you, isn't it? Say it. It's growing. Oh, from, somewhere. <laughs> something. From somewhere. Just, um, yeah, I would like to switch to games, but uh, yeah. real quick, like, Jeff, did you have any good beer expense- experiences then at it? Like, did you discover anything, or was it more known um, fair? I think the problem with that uh, kind of place is that you taste so much in such a small period of time. Not only are you getting drunk at the end of it, but uh, your palate is all messed up. So if you go from one station to the next, you don't really remember uh, the brewery you were just at. Like, (laughs) you don't. So it's great that they're all there, and I'm sure that they're trying to, you you know, gain customers through something, and I can remember some of them, but I don't think it's a good experience for them it's more like hey what can get me hammered give me this I'm going to go over to the Bud Light tent then go over to Left Field I think was there and Mad Jack was there they had their apple cider okay yeah yeah yeah. did they have their root beer because that's the one I don't think they did I don't think they did I think it was the apple so they didn't have any left it was just sold out yeah (laughs) but uh, nothing that I can recall that was like off the charts Side launch was there. Yeah. <laughs> and it was delicious. Yep. But <laughs> it was. Uh, beautiful. And that, this guy. So, the gaming news I bought a PS4. Whoa. One of us. One, One of us. us. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, got, you all got lo- long load times. Holy hell. <laughs> I forgot how long for, it takes to load a game. For Jeez. What? For what? what are you talking about? So the one, actually, like a, a nod to you, uh, Gavin. I was actually playing Just Cause Three as one oh, of the games. Oh, that's the worst one to start with. The worst one to do. Is it? Is it notoriously <laughs> bad loading? Okay. You remember when I first got it? That was like my huge primary complaint of the game was the load times were stupid long. Okay, that helps me a bit. Like, and I'll say, <laughs> so I, I got, um, I got three games with it. Um, I got the, I bought the Nathan Drake edition. Not so much. It was actually like the cheapest basic option plus it came with uh, Nathan Drake which I wanted to play anyways the fourth one uh, Thief's End so excited to dip into that um, I was a little bit on the fence about it though because it's like the blue the thing is blue and it's got Nathan Drake on it and I'm trying to think about like in a year am I going to really want to <laughs> have Nathan yeah, Drake yeah. adorning my living room but I, I figure eventually he'll be kind of like on a shelf like underneath so it'll be fine <laughs> don't yeah, have to look on it directly as away as possible to keep you know kid hands off of it <laughs> also, this, this um, uh, the buttons on the front because they're like not press-in buttons are just like if you if your skin makes contact with them they work. So like baby was turning it on all the time just yeah. by like grazing it with her little hands. So I had to move it, and then I'll even turn it on if I'm dusting. So uh, yeah, just be weary of that, or else it's just gonna be on. And it's not gonna do anything other than just like up your energy bill. I was just um, I'm just staring like. I I brought it brought it out and I'm just like so how do you turn this thing off? <laughs> like I was looking at it for a bit because there's no previously there's been pretty obvious like glowing buttons and now like it's cleverly hidden. It's so pristinely hidden. I'm not sure why they did that though. 
prom. Yeah, like what to what end? Like, like I, I imagine, like you can imagine kids like just like setting it up on Christmas and staring at it, like like I have no Dad. idea what to do. Dad, help! Oh man, I'll say that. so. The this, so this would be kind of a funny review. I mean, we're about to get into another cycle of consoles, so to do a review of the PS4 is a little bit bizarre but like uh, this would be my first foray into the new generation of consoles and oh god like it accepts keyboard input that's fantastic for signing up the first time <laughs> yeah. oh how how beautiful that was um yeah and like the actual like the system and the menus and everything like they it in its entirety is quite beautiful the um this kind of half off mode or the save power mode that it runs on mm -hmm. is phenomenal so it just like boots up in a quick second a great experience I had was the we had some food delivering, and in the middle of a game, hopped out to the main, and, and I think this would be an overarching concept around. Uh, I think these consoles seem to be very father friendly as far as being able to jump into games and like jump out as necessary. Yeah, I don't know if it's for every single game that it works like this, but I found <laughs> it so far not down. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Yeah, like I imagine anything online, but anything yeah. you're just playing through. <clears throat> anything uh, that you're playing with it, yeah. Yeah, so because. I was playing it, uh, food came, I had to run to the door, so I got out to the main screen, went, got the food, now I have food, and I wasn't really going to play with it, so I hopped into Netflix, just put something on, watched that for a little bit while I ate, okay, now food's gone, hopped back into the game, and I'm just exactly right where I was, and like just cruising along. Mm -hmm. And this is after you come down, press button, sit down, ready to go, mm -hmm. you got games. Yeah. So that, that, that singular focus on just playing games certainly is an advantage compared to consoles. Which has been like that's been a lot of fun to see. Mm -hmm. the, the load, man, that, the the just cost load times. I'm glad to hear that from you because yeah, that that was no, troubling. Man. I'm like, oh god, this is it's forever. This, this is, oh, it was it was rough. It was very rough. But you know, uh, like, even like you know, open world games usually you bank for a few extra moments of load, but like that was just a while. And like even after they patched it to make it better, it was still. A long time, you know. It's... Yeah, but it's uh, no, but you're on point, man. That game is fantastic, and I had a had a bit of a hankering for an open world, and this kind of felt like they were playing that open world game, and they got real bored of traversing. Mm -hmm. So like, just just give them like some sort of magic shot, slingshot, or something, just for us, just as a dev tool, and then they, they yeah. just kept it in because it's amazing. Cause that's the most overpowered, it's <laughs> absurd, like appendage i've ever seen in video games like that is just a riot oh yeah, it's man how it evolved too because um in i played the first one like the, like just cause one and that game was it's so different compared to where it's gone now but like you you had the parachute and you did have the grappling hook but it was actually like a weapon you had to take out and it was a, it was like a spear gun that you'd have to shoot it wasn't attached to your arm or anything and then in the second one is when they really streamlined it to be kind of this Spider-Man extendo glove. Um, and then you had the parachute as well. Uh, and then the third one, they're like, well, let's give you a wingsuit too. Um, but yeah, the second one, you had that same sort of like, th that thing just, you were like Spider-Man with guns and a parachute. And it's like, that's just too much power for one person yeah, um, but in a very great way i mean like it's yeah. to great effect i basically i'm saying because it's kind of like the it's a perfect powered fantasy zipping around it's it's them having it's a very much a video game and it's very much fun for it like it's kind of the throwing away of any um concern about realism as far as i exist in this open world you're just this overpowered monkey zipping about bringing death <laughs> and it's a blast and some of my favorite moments, too, was just flying around with the wingsuit. Like, that was very relaxing. Like, you know, just going over, like, a lavender field and just sort of cresting the top of it. And I was like, that's really cool. It's like the colors were nice and vibrant. Like, the game had a lot of really fun little moments in it, but they were fun little moments you had to discover on your own. Like, they weren't really... Your hand wasn't held and brought to these nice moments. Like, it was... Um, it allowed a lot of discovery, but not by way of, like hidden objectives or things like that just by exploring and discovering the world and you know bridges yeah, think... explode wonderfully i'm not sure if you've blown up a few bridges yet but uh <laughs> it seems <wow>. aggressive <laughs> yeah. it... well it's just like good? these are people you're supposed to be liberating here they're zipping about ruining their bridges <laughs> seems... <laughs> yeah i know but i'm caring about i'm also building chairs for the old ladies so you know exactly <laughs> so the um, 
Yeah, so otherwise, I mean, like, the you start the game, and as it's installing, they have something called Boom Beach, which is just a, a tinier sign box you get to just play around in while it's installing. So you have, like, no downtime. I don't know if you noticed that one. I don't think it was around when I did it. Okay, Maybe it must have been one of the patches. Yeah. But, yeah, you, you start it, and it's like, yeah, there's something called Boom Beach, and you just, like, you hop in, and it's just tiny little... There's no people. There's nothing the else. iOS app? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, so the, and on the top is telling you like how long it's installed, and as soon as it installs, you just leave and play the actual game. Um, and between that and just like the save points or and the restart points after you die, like I'm just finding it's super accommodating with time, which has been fantastic. That's really yeah. cool. That was uh, the one so, thing that I found was frustrating about it is like um, every time I would die, I would see the time just ticking away on the clock, and I'm like, oh, nap time's almost over. Come on, yeah. just load. And then like it would load, and it, I would like get maybe 20 feet from where I respawned and then I die and then it'd take like four times longer than I lived to load and I'm like oh just do it just go <laughs> uh, yeah it's one of the I suppose that's one of the worst parts of the death is the load time more than the yeah, setback right. it's not yeah it's not having to redo the stuff it's having to wait for it to reload that was really the hard part for it which almost knocked me out of the game and then luckily the patch brought it down enough that I was able, okay, I can enjoy this. And then I also stopped dying as often, which is great. Because um, there is a bit of yeah, a yeah. ramp up as far as like unlocking different tools and stuff that help keep you from dying. And that helped. Well, it's just like eventually, it's a real um, dark ballet. Like once you learn how all the things work together and like you get really good at the hook shot and the, the parachute and you're flying up, like it, you can you put you string together some really beautiful looking stuff. Like it's kind of nuts. Like hook shot, hook shot, go over, jump on this guy, parachute up, fly over this way, wingsuit, <laughs> zip down the coast. And you're just like, this is like a, this is wild. And then you steal a helicopter, zip up. Like it's that's wild. And like I said, it, it's great from a father's perspective because it's just super <clears throat> respectful of time. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I'll just, just quickly for the other stuff. So I uh, NHL 2016. It was on for like a on for a song and I tended to enjoy hockey games. I think they've entered the Uncali Valley part now where the everything looks so pristine and the players look and act normally so perfectly. Like it's like the, the, the little quirks like when they get into a corner and they kind of need to jump around or hit somebody else where it used to be acceptable because it was oh this is a video game. It looks like a video mm -hmm. game. Now because it looks like an actual human match of hockey like yeah. you get this bizarre it's it's kind of off putting like how close they are. It's it yeah. definitely uncanny Cali, uncanny valley. Yeah. And it, unfortunately now too is like they've kind of also made it in that realism they've started to not make it as fun anymore. Oh. Like it's 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 still like I think there was a bit of an up it helped when I learned the mechanics a little bit better and I'm starting to have a bit of a better time with it, but it's just not the same um you know, you remember I think like two thousand twelve was a really great year for a hockey game. Uh and there was like probably like a two thousand eight before that. NHL '94. Are you kidding yeah. me? Wrap around. And even then, that one is still damn entertaining when you play it on an emulator. So it kind of feels like they might have taken a few too many steps towards real life. Yeah, so it's trying to strike that balance between like you need to be able to play it like a game rather than a like a like a hockey broadcast simulation. You know, and it's that you want that sense of like, ooh, this this looks like a really fun, good hockey match. But then you also want it to feel like a good video game and playing a video game and playing hockey are sometimes not the same thing. Most times not the same thing. You don't really lose many teeth in video games. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, well. you want to capture that excitement of, of playing hockey, but and then sometimes I think they focus a lot on the realism of the the physics and and the texture mapping and lighting lighting and all that stuff. Well, even um, um, I'll give you another one. I mean, like the one one of the bizarre and kind of bold choices is that they have real life like video broadcasters before each game, like breaking down what's going to happen. And you know they do they do not have enough videos to make that viable. <laughs> like how long until you see repeats of that thing? Like that's. Yeah. That seems doomed to fail. Like they, they got pretty good with just the voices. Yeah. I mean, obviously you'd hear repeats, but like it, it felt fresh enough that it, it was forgivable. But man, those videos are going to be. I don't, I don't even know why either. Like, why? Who wants to see? Like, this is about playing. <laughs> a, like, I don't want to. I don't. I don't know. I'm sure anyone. Maybe it's 
it's from NBC. It's like NBC is all over this thing. Uh, um, like the NBC logo and like EA on NBC, all this great stuff. So I don't know if they're pushing their own guys. But man, it's, it is a bizarre choice to see actual humans talking to me. It's like 1990s like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> video. Don't look, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> don't judge you? me. I'm playing hockey, not wing commander. <laughs> Leave me alone, Bob <laughs> Cole. I don't need your <laughs> condemnation. Uh, but anyway, that's a blast. And, uh, so I'm going to try to get into Nathan Drake too. There's part of me that wants to... Gavin, you'd offered up uh, lending me some of your copies. Oh, I don't no, know if it comes out. It's on air. What's this? Lending it out. So, it, well, that's the you, eight, you, you know? you've gone you've gone your route of going like one by one, like going through the series one through four, and I was I surmise I'm not sure I have the patience, and I just want to jump into four and see what see what this beautiful console can produce because it sounds like this has thus far been the crescendo, like this has been the highest piece that the console's produced. Yeah, is that like fair? the other two look dated, but the fourth one just looks so pretty so like if it depends on the story and how important it is to you like if you want to kind of learn where nathan drake like or at least where the game got its start i guess if you're curious on like how the game mechanics have evolved over time and all that then i'd say play through them chronologically um but if you're really just excited to get into it then i say go for it yeah, yeah i think i think the, actually so i've seen i've seen some projects where they've taken each of the those games and just put together all of the cutscenes, and apparently they end up being pretty good movies. <laughs> like, like it's pretty cohesive. Like, so they'll actually cut it together. So I might, I might just watch those yeah, and get yeah. through it. The thought of playing three games to get to this one, yeah, it's a little bit. I got a lot of other stuff. I know the whole. Not skip the third one um, and get right into four, um, but we'll see. Nice. The, uh, so the whole um, the reason for this was um, the No Man's Sky comes out on August 9th. Oh, you're preparing for that, eh? I am preparing for <laughs> I am preparing for the one and only game <laughs> when I take off into space. God, if I hate this game, <laughs> like it's gonna so it's gonna be final, like our final episode will be the week prior to that. Yeah, because um, exactly. we will never see Trevor again. Yeah, I'm just like I come onto the call and I'm just like staring at my feet the whole time. It's like Trevor, do you want to say anything? Uh, no. You, you just want no. to get back to the game, don't you? Yeah, no, don't no, not even that. I, I'm saying like if it's bad, I'm just going to be oh, yeah. ruined, be like, a husk of a man. Like either it's good and you're going to be playing it, or it's bad and you're going to give up on video games and everything to do with them. <laughs> just quit the podcast. Yeah. So it is a big. Time, you're gone. There's it's a, a big lot of hype around this one too, right? Like it's. It's hinging on a lot of things working for it. So I feel like the thing, it's been so quiet though. Like it's this weird type of confidence it almost feels like it has. Like for the, for they, they've just started to release some trailers on the lead up to it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's like four, like fly, survive, fight, or whatever four that they're going. And they have ones for each one. For the first time you saw somebody else, like the, not the face, like the helmet of somebody. And they kind of showed you how you'd go into a place and buy and sell like this is the type of thing that you usually know like head to toe by the time the game's even close to being released like there's a bunch of stuff that we have no clue about how that stuff works in this game which i don't so much think is which somehow it to me just feels given given how much they have shown of the game i mean they've been on prime time they're on colbert like showing it like it's not like they've been uh cut off from the media they just have not shown a bunch of it which feels again like a sort of quiet confidence in the product to allow people to experience it i find that refreshing though because when we're, we're in a day and age where like movie trailers pretty will give you the whole thing like there's not much left to our discovery as as the audience so i'm actually very happy that they're limiting how much of what's available in the game to be uh, exposed early and prematurely, like it's just let it, just let let us discover it. Or if we don't want to discover it for ourselves, let us read a review about it after it comes out. But yeah, I think sometimes people mistake hype for just a slow release of everything, and it's like, oh no, we'll just release it at once. Don't like give us everything, and then it's like when you see a movie trailer and all the best jokes are in the trailer, and then you see the movie and you're disappointed because you've already had all those awesome moments 
um, brought to your attention, you've already experienced them before you've had a chance to see the movie. So now it's like you're just watching, you're there, and the only thing you get to experience for the first time now is the filler in between the five good jokes. And you get disappointed. You'd be disappointed anyways because the movie only has five good jokes, but you're more disappointed because those five good jokes are already spoiled for you. So if a video game is kind of already like, you already know everything you're going in for. Like, yes, you get to experience it yourself, but there's that sense of like, wow, I can do this too? That sort of thing can only happen once. And it's better to happen when the player has the controller in their hands than when they're watching a YouTube video. Like, it, it gives them more ownership on the discovery of that ability. You know, you let them know enough of what they can do to whet the appetite. But then, you know, especially a game with apparently a whole universe of things to do, you know, you don't want to show all your cards at once. You just show enough cards, you know. Here I am mixing all my metaphors again, but you just reveal enough that you get people... So you take the paper off the side of the cupcake. Yeah, There's and then, <laughs> then you stick the hook in. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, and then you... And you let those hand. dogs fight. Dogs yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Everybody still with me here? You good? All right. You nailed it. Stuck the landing. That's perfect. So the <laughs> yeah. So the yes. Yeah, so, and I'm happy with. It. I mean, that thing is. Uh, they really upped their game. I think there's some part of me that actually probably would have preferred uh, an Xbox. Honestly, I had been mm-hmm. my last console had been the Xbox, and I like tend to like how they do uh, consoles and such. But the real focus of this game, and besides, honestly, I think majority of friends that I know that play also have this one so I mean hell like two out of three dads had a PlayStation 4 so <laughs> might as well go with it yeah if we yeah, were gonna adjustment too because I really like the Xbox um, 360 and I, I was thinking of the Xbox one and just kind of like oh like, it could be nice to stick with the same system and just sort of the the way that they had done their whole UI for for their system and that it felt good it felt comfortable and then Xbox One looked like it would be kind of familiar and, and inviting, but there was also just that thing about an entire library of games uh, with PlayStation that I've never had a chance to experience, you know, since I kind of switched. I, it's like I, I hop between uh, consoles from, like, like, I went from PlayStation 2 to Xbox 360 to PlayStation 4. Like, I just frog hop between them all. Um but yeah, no I see brand that. loyalty. Look at you. Yeah, Marketers yeah. hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Find out why. <laughs> I also compare their products to pastries you find on the side of a highway. But you know. Oh, here we go. All right. <laughs> it begins. But no, uh, once I got used to the PlayStation 4's interface and everything, it, it just started to feel comfortable. And now I really like it. Like it's, it's really nice. It's streamlined. It's clean. It gets me where I need to be. I love being able to minimize my game and pull up Netflix. Like All those aspects about it just feel good and intuitive. I'm sure the Xbox One has very similar components, and I imagine one day I will experience them too. But for the time billing, I'm really happy with the PS4. Like It's a fun system. Um, there's also a, a really nice library on it that I don't really see with the Xbox, and the exclusives available in the Xbox are things that aren't quite l- as alluring to me um, in a sense of, like, I haven't had a chance to experience this narrative arc yet, this franchise, or there's new things coming out that are PS4 exclusive that um, just, they're, they're new, they're new things that we're exploring and things that we're seeing so um, plus the indie games that are coming out for the PS4 are, are really solid as well um, you're seeing a lot of exclusives for PS4 and the indie development that you're only seeing timed exclusives for in the PS or in the uh, Xbox development but that could change but um, like right now the PS4 is doing they have a great relationship with the uh, with the indie titles that are being released so that's really fun too yeah, if actually that's a that's a good segue because one just to uh, close out the show, I was thinking of asking you guys for some recommendations. I mean, for one thing, so two that I want to dip into. Like, I've never actually got to play Shadow of the Colossus, so I'd like to mm-hmm. pick that up and get that playing. Yeah, um, no, there was nobody needs to convince you about that. Last of yeah. Us, jeez, yeah, Christ, Last of Us. I never got it. Never got a chance to play that. I'll have to try that one. Uh, there was uh, so the other, I want to play. There's something called Odin Sphere. I think it had come out for the PS3 initially. It's oh. a side, it's a side-scrolling, super beautiful, like art, artistic, like very flat-looking 
it, it's kind of like it, someone took a <laughs> a really nice looking piece from like Deviant Art and turned it into a video game. But it's <laughs> probably the best description I've heard of it. <laughs> that is good. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but a good Deviant Art piece. Let's be clear on that. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. a very good one. And they but I think it's kind of based a little bit in Norse uh, mythology, so Viking type of stuff. Uh, but it, yeah, it's just like fully voice acted. Like apparently, it's a pretty cool story. And the combat is very reminiscent of the game I'd played and recommended, um, Elysian Tale or mm-hmm. oh, Dust yeah. Dust and Elysian Tale. Yeah, just like with the combos and like the side scrolling things. So and I had loved that one to death. So yeah, I'm very curious to I want to try that one. So now as PS4 vets, like besides Last of Us, like what other recommendations would you have for me? Hmm. Well, you have Uncharted, and you need to play that before No Man's Sky, right? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I'll never one. get a chance otherwise. Because <laughs> yeah. it won't happen otherwise. <laughs> and I would avoid playing, um, like, Naughty Dog games quite close to one another, because I found, like, the some of the movement mechanics and the cover mechanics and stuff in Last of Us kind of similar to um, Uncharted. Uh, just because, you know, they're it's like when you play two different Ubisoft games, sometimes they start, there's certain things that you start to see where it's like, yeah, they made a good design choice, of course it's going to echo through to other things because that's how you solve that problem. Um, so there's this slight familiarity between those two titles that I think might, you know, uh, feel weird for you. So I would like tuck some No Man's Sky in between those two. Um, yeah, I'm would, trying to think of what else I have that I would do Infamous. I think you'd really like Infamous. Yeah. Or I actually, I'd, I'd played, uh, I'd played it on the wait. No, no, I played its uh, competitor, the Xbox competitor called Prototype. Okay. Oh, yep. Which was similar, and it, it's basically a, ends up being a god simulator because you're a mutant and you're able to grab new powers. You're flying around the sky. Yep. Um, yeah, inf- that's a good recommendation. Infamous had looked really great. Now the it's the cheap. new one or the old one? The like new Second one. Son? Second Son with, I think you get First Night as well. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's the girl really... with the neon. Yeah. They're both pretty cheap. Like, yeah. uh, there's Actually, sales all the time. Right Say again, Gavin? They're on sale right now. Yeah, oh, there you go. Where at uh, EB Games? No, on the digital store. Oh, nice. Like, okay. He's like, where is that? What? There's this what? store <laughs> <laughs> on the line? My goodness! Oh, on the <laughs> maps. Um, yeah, because the 360 was so note. archaic, you know, I yeah. clearly <laughs> wouldn't understand it. Uh, a side note for uh, Prototype: that game was developed by the same developer that made my favorite Hulk game of all time, called Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a good game. That was an that excellent game. game. How have they not recreated that for? Like, yeah. I think even if they just like forget, like don't don't do a big new. Just it. take that game, up-res it, give it some new power and maybe some new physics for the buildings or something. Honestly, just leave it as it is. Just give me a port. I don't care. Yeah. I just want to play it again and not have to drag my PS2 out of storage. Like I just want those games. So Man, bad. that was on the PS2. That's a yeah. that's an amazing yeah. accomplishment for the PS2. It was so good, and like those wrestling combo moves, like that game was just beautiful. Everything about it was so much fun. You felt so powerful. It was just a study in catharsis. <laughs> like when you take That's... a running jump and grab a helicopter out of the air and then impale a robot with it. Like, come on. I made gloves, gloves out of a sedan. <laughs> and then I punched a monster in the face with them. Like, that's just too good. I know the, the um, I was tempted to pick it up because it was a pretty good sale on it, but um, Transformers, uh, nuts. The most recent one, it looks very cartoonish, like it's a cell shaded style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Return to someone care to Google real quick. Transformers? Yeah, there's a recent Transformers game. Those are always, uh, to me, hit and miss. Devastation. I never know. Yeah, so Devastation. So this one looks like the 80s cartoon. Like they've styled okay. it very much in that vein, and if you see some of the videos around the combos and the action, like I would say it's a little bit of well, not exactly one to one, but just that feeling you kind of got from the combat of um, that Hulk game, okay. kind of carries over to this, where it's like you're in the space and like it's all about big brazen. It's about embracing the absurdity of it, where it's you are a car that punches other cars like and it it just seems to go with it so that i'd heard great things i never actually uh, played it it seems like it's along that th- same vein 
So yeah. we have, um, geez. So, so in summary, what do we have that has that list? So we have Last of Us, Infamous. Um, I'm trying to think of other. Exclusive. You can try Bloodborne if you wanted to kill yourself at the end of it, but <laughs> so, I saw that in sales. Just like I don't it's know if I want to. Hard game. Yeah. I don't want to get that good at something. Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank's a good one. Platformer. Yeah. That's a good one. Fun. Yeah. Pretty easy. Lots uh, of weapons. You always tuck into some God of War. God of War, yes. Get ready for the new one. Yep. Oh, that's right. There's a new one. What was God the... War, was there a PS4... Was there a God of War 4 PS4 specifically? No. Yes. Third... No. Oh, like a remaster. Is it the remaster, yeah. No, no, no. So I mean like one that was built and released only on PS4. It's all been PS3 stuff, right? Yeah. 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 Eh. I think... Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a PS4 guy now. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the past. I don't want to go back. <laughs> says says the guy who's excited to play Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, Killzone's <laughs> okay if you want to do Killzone. That no, that one is super cheap. Like I, I think I saw that one for like four bucks. <laughs> That's it's like kinda, it's like eye candy. Like it's not. It, there's no real story to it. My worry was that I think like, that one is pretty old. Is it not? Like that was like the beginning yeah. of. Yeah. See, what, and the, my pro, my slight issue with that is the. I'm kind of excited to see this console. Besides games that are just absolutely phenomenal, like top and bottom, um, I'm kind of curious to see what this console can do and things like Nathan Drake or even just cause to an extent, like what they've been able to, besides loading times, what they've been able to like squeeze out of this thing. Like it's, the visuals are incredible. So I wanted to, and yeah, Last of Us, like that type of uh, overarching thing. Do Uncharted and then never go back <laughs> to anything. <laughs> Cool. That that is an excellent list, actually. So I'll yeah. start to uh, to take a peek. I think we'll maybe do a weekly thing, or it's <laughs> in addition to beer picks. Yeah. You guys can tell me which PS4 games to get. No, do we? Trevor, 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 money. Um, I would highly recommend <laughs> yeah. for to see like good visuals. Uh, Doom was beautiful. Some of the it was yeah. renderings and stuff like that really really solid. Um, it, it it was one of the prettier games I've played in a while. It was actually weird, like going from it and then going back to some other games I was playing and just being like, "Wow, yeah, they raised the bar quite a bit." And what they're able, and the load times are very reasonable on it too. So, uh, yeah, because you, you okay. die. Yeah. But uh, okay, no, good. I'll it, dip into that. The... Sorry, go on. No, it was just it was a very pretty game. Like it was just visually pleasing. Um, the, the one thing in it that I really loved was. The all the glass had this sort of asymmetrical foggy dew on it that would distort things you look through to. It mm -hmm. just made the entire area feel like moist and humid, and like you pair that with mm -hmm. like all the gore and blood everywhere, it just made just added to the atmosphere, and that was really just like a textural treatment they did on glass that just collected the condensation in the room, but it was just the way that that was handled. It just, little details like that, and, you know, that's what these consoles can do now, is they can show these little details um, to help tell more of a story about the environment you're in. And, uh, yeah, it was just little things like that. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. That's really neat. Oh, so. metal and Metal Gear. Hello, Metal Gear. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, I saw that one, too. It wasn't... Uh... Uh, based on your recommendations, okay, I'll pick it up now. I was a little bit on the fence about it because not anything I mean, because I just, I've never like I played the first one for PlayStation. I never oh, really spun well. around on the system, <laughs> played around with it much more. Just the yeah, somebody that seemed a little bit of a stretch, but I have heard a lot of good things and some of the replay videos are kind of fun. So if you would recommend it, then. yeah, it just depends on your um, your tolerance for wacky. Yes, very much so. Because it's game over the top. Like all nuts, off the charts. Yeah, <laughs> that's Which so is weird. It's almost like Uncanny Valley of like narrative tone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so seriously, and then you have these really wacky moments that just contrast starkly with like a shrapnel bloody mess of a protagonist. But then it's like, and it's yeah. just this weird. Yeah. Where he hides in a yeah. box. Bling. Yeah. And it's like, how's this? It's like, you're like a geopolitical military thriller and you're hiding <laughs> in a box. So if you, can, if you can handle that juxtaposition, which they have in boxfuls, um, then... Oh, yeah. uh, come on. 
Tere, 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 tere. Man. That sounds good. So, 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 last thing I'll mention, I think we should probably wrap it up for the week. The um, like Gavin, you had mentioned like possibly you could I could you could lend something. I had a friend of mine at work there. He said the same thing. Like you know, I could I'll bring next time I'm in town. I'll bring some discs and you could just have and you can play around with them. Yeah. And, and it's just like that concept is now so foreign to me because yeah. I haven't done that in ages. It's like like huh? You can like these can discs share, are like you can share it over digital if you wanted to. Not to put Gavin on there, but like you can <laughs> share play for like an hour on anything. No, oh, no, well, an hour. Like a second. Well, at least you get a taste. Like, so if Doom's installed, you can play it for an hour. And... Yeah, well, you got to factor load time in too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the thought that you could like just take this like physical disc and like pass it to somebody else, and now they get to play that physical disc, and it's no. like shit. No, <laughs> like you know, I'm not. I'm not asking for donations, guys. I'm just like I'm saying. I'm finding it like curious. You don't lend games. And Those by the way, are... I'm, I don't want your games, Jeff. I'm just if curious. I... If I buy a disc, talk to your kids about sharing yet, or are you no? Never- <laughs> mine, this is mine. Everything but games, kids. These days, if you buy a disc, it's like a collector's item. It sits on your shelf. It's in a pretty box. It's done. If I want a, like something on a sale, or I don't really care about it, digital, mm-hmm. and then I can't really share it. But. Yeah. Okay, so, so most of your games that you're playing on PS4 are the phys- of the digital versions. Yeah, even just with the pricing. Um, before our Canadian dollar got killed, but uh, it's a lot cheaper just in the store if you buy them. It's just hard drive space, so you'll you'll figure that out <laughs> quickly. Yeah, you'll you'll get there. <laughs> Disc or digital, it's the same space. So, hmm. but this thing also like again like in this beautiful future, I think you can plug in an external hard drive, right? I don't think so. You can't. Oh, jeez. No, but you can pull the hard drive out and put in a fresh one. Yeah. Like if you want to go buy your own, like. Because it's just a standard like hard disk drive, so you could go to like a computer shop and just buy like a one or two terabyte drive and just swap it out. I know some people who have actually swapped out for solid state drives. Yeah, drive. I was gonna say, can you can you upgrade it to an SSD? You can, but I don't think there's much gain. Hit, or you'll be paying just as much for the solid state drive as you did for the whole console. Because hmm. I have um. If you no, there's like, a one terabyte solid state drive kicking around, then yeah, check it oh, in. Oh God, yeah. But you know, <laughs> dust dust the gold off of it first, because apparently. <laughs> no, that's a, I think you guys are overselling that a bit. So there, there was an Amazon, Am, Amazon, 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 Mobular, <laughs> Mobular. I wouldn't give Amazon your credit card number. Yeah. <laughs> why, why aren't I getting my purchases, Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> Amazon.co. So. <laughs> No, so Amazon had a sale on, and it was a seven hundred and seven hundred and fifty gig SSD for two hundred bucks. That's not too bad, but that's only going to bump you up another two hundred and fifty. Yeah, but it's SSD compared like that speed like boost. Four seconds. The load times are not significantly yeah. better. Oh, okay. Like you won't. Maybe some games I think are more optimized than others, but. For the most part, it's not going to matter. Okay, I'd much prefer not to bother and touch anything. I'd, I'd be happy to leave it alone. Trevor destroys his warranty next week. Well, the whole the whole purpose of this thing is just to not. It's a game machine that I don't have to think about because like the gaming PC is enough of a bother where it's always it's a thing. There's like constant like drivers that require my attention as opposed to this is just supposed to be the blue Nathan Drake box that <laughs> sits on the cabinet. As long as it's got automatic updates and you're good, otherwise you'll... Yeah, because that's one of the things about the low power mode too. But anyways, now now we're just again reviewing a two year old console. So. You're new. This it's it's that young jubilant excitement as I <laughs> as I just dived in. All just all for the, the better. Sorry, go ahead, Gavin. Just change the date on the episode. <laughs> yeah, like PS4 like <laughs> at launch day be perfect. Like so, all the next conversation about No Man's Sky will kind of like. Oh, it's like we're predicting the future. That's all. Yeah. Or it was announced then. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a while. Oh, so I think that will do it for this week after gushing over consoles and Jeff's love of launching from sides. I finished it. Look at this. Can... It's done. The side launch is done. I kept watching. Like, it was pretty obvious to see because it's this big yellow... Yeah. I can't just like coming into frames. So. I won't fault them on their marketing and their you know design of this. This is great, but 
They're hard to miss. I don't like it. <laughs> hey, Gavin, you gotta, man, you gotta save me because it's all. I don't know what to do with myself if like you also think it's like skank water. I'll Gas you know. station muffin. Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to go to the gas station get a muffin now for a cupcake. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Or it's Bible. <laughs> or it's Bible. Uh, yeah, it's Bible. Every, everybody, thank you once again for listening. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know how you're going to transition to close. <laughs> just going to just pull the band-aid off. <laughs> like, <laughs> just end it. The, pull the cord. That's a better one. <laughs> Everyone... Thank you so much for listening. This has been New Dad Gaming. We do this show weekly. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and uh, Google Play. I believe we're on their podcast store as well, but anywhere you can subscribe to a podcast. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of us, you can visit our website at newdadgaming.com. Uh, if you have any show, so, uh, show suggestions or questions you'd like us to address, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love rating on iTunes. Share it and subscribe. Pass it around. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. And until next time, I'm Trevor, and I have a one-year and two-month-old. My name is Gavin. I have an 11-month-old. And I'm Jeff. I got a six-year-old and a three-year-old. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, guys. See you next week. See ya. Bye. <laughs> it's just like a slow tumble down a, off a cliff towards the end there. <laughs> just like, it's like, wait to call it? I should probably call it. Like, okay, now let's talk about update yeah, features on the PS4. <laughs>